all of a sudden substantially increase our cost of putting together one of these agencies. I feel like we're challenging the staff to do as well. Uh, administrative, uh, the principals, uh, I don't know if so much the teachers in that, but coordinating this and everything, because things aren't going to be consistent. I don't know, they've changed a lot already in the last few years. And my concern is what, what do we what do we want this district to look like, let's say five years from now? And do we want to have a three campus LHS or would it be more efficient to have, from Mike's point, a two campus even? We've got room at Harmon to add on if we need to, and I'm not saying start construction tomorrow on that. Um, but let's come up with a long-range plan. Well, what's our plan? What are we going to look at? And let's put things in place so that we take the burden off of these folks and, you know, trying to scramble for two weeks getting buses and lunches and uh, teachers in place, books in place. I've, I've talked to some of those people are, you know, begging me to take a vote, figure out where we're going to go, so we can ship the books where we need to be. But that's what I'd kind of like to see is a plan in place of, of what we think we're going to look like and, you know, look at this vision that's going on that's going to change the world the way it looks. Are we backing ourselves into a corner that's going to, Got a new board sitting here five years from now. Or how do they do that? Yeah. Okay. You know, uh, Mr. Knapp, if you remember last year, uh, and we met a, a, a year ago in March to discuss this, and one of the things that we that I put up on my slide is, you know, we will make whatever you come up with work. <coughs> but when you talk about schedules, for instance, master schedules. Um, Certainly there's been talk and we'll wait until there's direction from the board as far as future about schedules, whether it's block or something else. But I think the principals have have discussed even more opportunities in the future to have even less travel than even right now. So this is the first year that they really worked diligently and I don't want to speak for y'all so y'all can chime in about really trying to prevent you know that travel and that's where they got to the second period deal and we've got to strategically place classes according to the schedule that you have but let me let me make make something clear no matter what schedule you have no matter how many students you have there are always conflicts in schedule because you have singletons and a kid that's in the top band and wants to be in apiology and there's only one of those classes each. So we'll never as principals be able to, to undo all of those kind of conflicts. Those happen no matter what kind of configuration you have. What I wanted to make sure is there weren't conflicts because of the transportation issue, you know, that a kid couldn't get a class and really wanted a class because of the transportation. But y'all want to speak, I mean, y'all talked a little more about the transportation thing. I don't remember. Um, maybe not. Well, <laughs> you make a good point about, you know, kind of hindsight being 2020 and about what we would do if we, if we had a chance to do it all over again. Because I've thought about that several times. And, you know, I think the prediction that when we opened, Five years ago or ten years ago, was that there was going to be five thousand students at LHS, and we were going to need to do all these things. Um, I just want to say one thing about your um, You know, the one thing that I took out of last year's meetings, and even the year leading up to last year's meeting, was that people wanted us to replicate what we were doing for the ninth graders for the ten years, and the board. Wanted us to replicate what the good things about LHS meant, the small learning communities and all the wonderful things that we did. So that's what I know my focus has been is replicating that and giving the sophomores the same opportunities that we give the freshmen. And I think we have a plan in place to do that. I think the plan that we have in place um, is going to keep several students from dropping out, it's going to help several students go to college as we've done. Um, that there's going to be a lot of good things to come from. The problem is we haven't, you know, we still need another year to do that. Um, as far as classes and busing and transportation, we've already started work on next year's master schedule as far as lining things up 
we thought for a while we were going to be able to only do first and fourth and not have to do second, um, second and third thing. But um, really, that's more of a fine arts thing. We can do it with ath athletics, but fine arts prevents us from doing that, having three major bands <coughs> and orchestras and choirs. With athletics, I think we can make it work. Um, if we've, we've moved, some, moved some teachers, you know, like we just moved some French teachers and some sign language teachers, and we've kind of pulled foreign language out of the um, formula, and hopefully, I mean, like I said, we'll know this time next year that everything's going to line up master schedule-wise where there's, you know, when you talked earlier about you have the most at-risk kids, but they're the ones who are riding the bus. You know, really, I hate to say it, but the majority of our at-risk kids, and I look at us as being 60% at-risk because we have 61% on free and reduced lunch and learning. Those kids aren't the ones on the bus. Those aren't the kids in band. Those aren't the kids in orchestra. Those aren't the kids in choir. Those kids are with me all day long. And I think when I look at the big picture of what's my job and how am I going to do all the things that y'all asked us to do and how am I going to do everything on the sheet, it's replicating what we did before and doing that. You know, if a kid gets in trouble or if a, if a kid, um, we just call it losing, loses their privileges, gets in trouble or, or does something, then they're no longer on the main campus class. They lose that privilege of that UIL activity or that extra activity. So those kids are the same ones Kevin talked about. They're the ones that we could compare to any kid in Fireman, any kid in Marcus, any kid in They come in five minutes late, the class is still doing the warm up, they pick up, just they hit the ground running and everything's good. You know, the main thing, like he said, is, is more the cost, but I think a lot of people would, would argue that, 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 that cost makes up for the smaller communities. I think they will next year. And I think going along with that, if, if, if people really believe that the ninth grade concept's a good thing, about having ninth graders separate than 10th, 11th, and 12th, then who's to say that 9th and 10th is not even better? You know, if you can, if you can work these other things out as far as the unity and the athletics and all that other stuff. So, all I'm asking for another year well, actually, I, I have a question about several years Brenda, ago when I was researching. Can I sidetrack for just a second? Yeah. First, I, I want to make it perfectly clear to everybody that this is not a workshop about uh, Ms. Boyce or Mr. Plunkett. I think everybody here has respect for what you've done and who you are and what you've contributed to the LISD. So I, I just I want to clear that off the table. We're talking a system, not, not personnel. No, I'm no, sorry, Ms. Lane. No. Totally agree with that, but I have a major concern, Andy, and I cannot find that Dr. Jane that was on the Farmer, the original task force. And um, I called him and asked him his opinion of adding 10th graders in with 9th graders. And he said, absolutely not. I didn't agree to that. Where is my name at? And why is it on here? Um, and here's the, oh, maybe I'll find this out there. It's a funky name. He's in Denton. He's retired. Um, what? Uh, That's it. Never mind. They didn't. Uh, that, that is a big concern of mine. The whole point of building the ninth grade <coughs> campus back in Louisville when we were that test shift was to separate those ninth graders out. And you and a couple of others proved that successful, so successful that we re replicated it throughout the <coughs> I, I'm not. I'm not sure I buy into Louisville testing out adding 10th graders in. Part of the 10th graders that are having academic issues really didn't qualify to be 10th graders. They should still be in 9th grade. And Penny and I have had conversations about this. And I, I'm not sure I want to add 10th graders in with those 9th graders and they gain the positive that we've been seeing. Um, I compared this data to Plano data back a couple years ago when, when everything was in Plano doses and it's a great thing. Plano scores were lower than ours. So that doesn't tell me. Um, I am concerned about adding the graders in. But while Buddy may not get the calls, Buddy gets the call from me saying I just got a call. And where this this is a community issue. 
And you and I have had lots of conversations about this, and it's not about me and Plunkett, and it's not about me and Flores. It's about treating this community the same as the other 12 communities in this school district. And several people have made comments, and I liked it when Buddy called me one day and said, I get what you're saying. I can line 50 kids up on a football field, and no one can tell me where they came from. You can't tell a little school kid or a colony kid from a flower mound or a Marcus or a Keeperin or a Vasa. Um, so I'm, I'm very concerned. The travel is an issue. It is a reoccurring expense that is going to increase with the number of markers. Yeah, it's not going down. Unless y'all got something else. But I'll go back to what Mr. Plunkett said. The main reason that we decided to do the 9th, 10th grade campus was to try to save more kids. We had more kids entering into the 9th grade, but by 12th grade, about 300 were missing. And so since the 9th grade concept had been so successful, then let's see if we could not go on and extend and try to do that with the ninth and tenth grade. That extra nurturing. And I think that I was one that um, I went along with it because I believe in what um, the concept. I think that they can do it and it's not um, they are different. You know, you don't want to say that they're different, however, but when you look at reality and you look at a campus that has 60% of those socioeconomics, and then you look at one campus with less than 6%, you cannot treat these. But that goes back to, I did bring my numbers for you because you've been wanting these. The dropout rate since 2007 was on a downward trend. That's yeah. that column right there, yeah. Those That's numbers are... That's from TEA's, Greg. I, I don't even buy TEA's numbers sometimes. Well, I hope you do, because that's what we report. <laughs> so <laughs> I still say, I look at these kids, and when you look at these kids going in, and you monitor them, and you see the progress. But you're looking at the low performers only, and that goes back to what no, you No, I'm just not said. looking at the low performers only, that we have things in place for all kids, and we want to make sure that all kids succeed. We have always had the AP classes, the dual credit for the other kids, I mean for the, the high achievers. We have always had been able to reach those, but we, we were not addressing our weakest link. And if we do not address the weakest link, then it brings the whole district down. Mr. Greg, I, I don't think anybody's arguing that, and I don't think there's a person in this room that doesn't want to save every child, period. But the question comes down is, 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 you know, how far do we carry this out? Maybe if we go to five campuses, you know, you know, what's it going to cost us, and what's it going to cost in, in, in other areas? Uh, you know, whether it's a 9, 10 configuration in 11, 12, or the 9 and 10, 11, <clears throat> why do we need three campuses to do this? <clears throat> and, and if it works that well, why, why aren't we spreading it to all those, and especially, especially the Colony High School? We should be. So, you know, we, we've got a big picture to, 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 to look at, and that's that's the total budget in educating all of the 52,000. And, and, and do we put a, a disproportionate amount towards some to, to save them? Absolutely. And I think we're doing that. I think even before we went to the ninth grade split out of LHS, we still had programs trying to bring safety nets in to, to capture those kids and, 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 and make them successful. And we'll continue to do that. but. At, you know, at what price do we continue to experiment? If I remember right, the 2008 bond issue didn't even have the rebuilding of Louisville High School. And somebody tell me if I'm wrong. That was not in that bond election. But yeah. yet, right off the bat, we decided to spend a mega million dollars to placate Louisville High School because Louisville was actually being beat up on by administrator hiring friends in as opposed to uh, uh, going through the, the HR department and, 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 and other things. So we built this big high school and then we're going to expand it even more and go to three campuses. 
That was not part of the bond, did it? Yeah, election. but it wasn't part of the bond, however. I know, let me finish my point. My, my, my point being is, we've decided, and, and we being this board, that we're gonna run an experiment <clears throat> on Louisville High School. Well, let's spend, you know, how many mega millions to, to, to build something that, that the community never never voted for. Let's spend millions more to, to, for redundancies and extra buildings. And yet, there's not, I, I have not heard any, any uh, evidence or any uh, empirical study that comes in and says, this is the way that you're gonna crack, capture those kids. Now, you know, how far do we go with this? And, and, and if, if we're that sold on it, why don't we turn around and say, well, you know what, in Flower Mound and in Marcus, we're just gonna do nine tricks because those, those lower socioeconomic kids there aren't worth the extra money. You can't say that. Well, it comes down to we've got to do the best for the district, best for all the kids, and that includes those. And I, I don't think this board has ever had anything other than those kids' best interests at heart. And so that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about what's for the best interest for the whole district, for all kids going forward. Well, first of all, I don't think that um, the 9th, 10th grade campus was uh, in the bond election. The new school, the auditorium was not. However, when the city required us to put so much money on the sprinkler system, then they decided that it was not feasible to put all of that money to renovate. It was better to just go on it. And so that's why. Actually, the nine percent center was on the bond package, but it did not say for Louisville High School. If you look, no. If you look at the bond package vote, Louisville did not pass that bond package. It passed by the other communities in LASD. The reason that LHS is having the original section of LHS is having to be torn down is because the city of Louisville refused to give five more variances that have been being given for a number of years that had to do with fire fees. <coughs> and when they went in to look at the building about adding fire sprinklers, the asbestos and the maintenance over the years that hadn't been done correctly, it was cheaper to tear that building down and rebuild than to try and retrofit sprinklers in there. Well, I'm and the money that they're spending on LHS is done with bond money that wasn't spent on other bond packages that were that were budgeted for. Now the arena, no one asked for the arena. We asked for a gym that all of our kids could fit into, and we got an arena. So that's where the arena came from. That wasn't on the bond package, but that's how we got the arena. The basketball. Oh, basketball. Okay. Well, anyway, I'd like to thank the um, PTSA um, parents because these are phenomenal. And there's something here, this last one, I mean, it just keeps um, drawing me here. As a taxpayer, the time for questions and concerns of having two nine, ten campuses has already passed. The fact is, we have no major problem with the schools. In other words, if it's not broke, don't fix it. We must look at how the decisions we make and how they affect our children. I always tell my, ch my kids, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This quote works in real life also. This, right, I mean, like I said, all of them have some great information here. And they're saying that they're not having any complaints from the parents and from the students. The students are enjoying it. And the principal, haven't heard from Ms. Flores, but would just like a little more time to, to kind of monitor. Because we said that we would look at it, we would see how it is, and then if it doesn't work, then we'll try something else. But we voted to do it, and... Well, the problem I have with that one, we'll try something else. Again, I'll go back to it. We decide what we want to be when we grow up. Well, but if I'm you're saying going to college and you keep changing your major, yeah. it gets expensive. But as so long as you're working on it. We've got to decide what it is our right. district is, and we've got to work towards <clears> that goal. And I don't think student achievement, I really don't think it's going to be an issue. I mean, we've got the best up there. So yeah. They're going to make it happen. I mean, the Dr. Arthur said it perfectly. They'll make it happen if they have. They're not disappointed yet. But what is it we're, we're striving for in the future? And I, we can 
three campuses where we have growth, finishing growth, we add nine grade centers, we have, you know, things are gonna move around. Are we limiting ourselves in any way for three campuses? Can we get back to two campuses? I think we can easily. Like I said, not today, not tomorrow, but if it's in the plan, I think we could do it, but we still have our smaller running communities and potentially have other programs that I see coming down on the horizon. I, know, I mean, there are a lot of plans, a lot of ideas I'm seeing coming out there. Right. I don't want those to get sidetracked. But we're so. studying and we're planning long range. But it's expensive financially but and- But we can't keep changing, right. you know, hey, that didn't so work. We're, it's expensive to be studying this. And this group of people has but been telling you we're tired of being your study animal. Okay. I, I mean, we okay. can okay. I just have some questions, and maybe for Mr. Perry or Kevin, you might be able to um, address them. I'm just, oh, never mind. Okay, I want to clarify capacity. LHS capacity is 2,200. Correct? That's, that's correct. That's correct. Max, maximum capacity. Mike, that's max. Come, on, come on up here. But that's for the rebuild. That's the that's rebuild. The that's correct. When it is completely complete. Correct? 4,200 is the maximum capacity. Just and Harmon as is now is 1,200. Yes, sir. And Kilo is 11. That's correct. Come back to that as maximum capacity, not necessarily functional capacity. That's max, not functional. And then I had a question about the zoning for the two campuses. What middle schools did you say are split again? And I know we discussed this last year, but why? The delay is split, and is it Hedrick? And is that because of numbers? Like population coming from those campuses? Is that I, I think, Ms. Fowdy, and I'm, I'm sorry that Mr. Ellington's not here, but I think they, just to have a natural boundary, I think they used Fox, if I'm not mistaken, and so that's sort of right. where, where the way it worked. Uh, we have other split middle schools. It's not a good, I, I agree. I mean, I think that should be something that we should look at as far as trying not to split kids. I just didn't know. Uh, but that's, I think, how, how that. Okay. I just, that was one thing that when we were listening to the discussion popping in my head, and again, I don't have a map in front of me, um, but when you're splitting two, would it be possible to just send one here and one here? Um, again, it's probably the geographical location, but I wasn't sure if that's something that's been looked deep into or not. So, um, we'll look at it. The, the, the pro projected enrollment did make, you know, was taken into consideration about where the value would be. So I, I have to get that information. Okay. Ms. Kyle, yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, first of all, I think it's important to
we are deciding to have this workshop now. Why? And I know why. Because certain people don't want those 10th graders on that. Because once those 10th graders get on that campus, you're going to have to blast them out because the parents are not want Now, you can say, say, say it again. I'm sorry, girl. I say once those 10th graders are on the campus, some people think that you'll never get them off again and you won't be able to stop this program. I can say the number of people that call me about a complaint, whether it's about a baseball coach, whether it's about the fact that there's two girls walking around pregnant, they're juniors. What are you gonna do about that? I really don't have any control over that. You're gonna get the calls, and you're not gonna make everybody happy. But the simple fact is you being a board member, once a vote has been taken, and we had an addendum on this, we said that we will review it but we've got to give them a chance to let them work on it first. There is no 9-10 data because the 10th graders aren't even there yet. But yet we're putting the staff through this, we're putting the board through this, we're putting the public through this. Why? Because somebody wants to solve it. And I think you should be ashamed that you're doing this, no matter how much you think that you were doing this. Everything that was said here tonight has already been said over and over again. The vote has been taken. Go to some board classes and learn that once the board vote is taken, let it carry through, let the people do their job. Your job as a board member is to guide him. You have input, you give it to him. That is your job. And I'm sorry for my soapbox because it's getting out of hand. The micromanaging that you feel like you need to do as a school board member is getting out of hand. You have a problem, you talk to the superintendent. You don't make calls to Mr. Bonner, and you don't make calls to Mr. Perry. You go through him first. That is your job as a board member. And if you don't understand that, go to some classes and learn. Because you're making a mockery of this whole situation. Yeah, people are gonna say, well, there must be something wrong with it, because they keep calling a workshop on it. There's no data. There's no scientific data out there because we haven't had a chance for them to do it. So that is my soapbox. I'm done. I'm hoping that you're going to let these people make this job a successful because I know we have the two best principals that are there. I'm excited. I wish my kids went to a 9 foot 9 10. You're saying give it to the other schools? Well, they haven't even had a chance to even experience the ninth grade. Maybe they won't like it. I don't know. But the simple fact of the matter, it's set up, you have full speed ahead. I like what, what's happening and what's coming forward. And yes, there will always be problems. Thank Ms. Carr, I take exception in that. I, I don't I, care. I, I am the one that uh, I'm I'm going to ask for No, you guys have had enough. You've taken an hour of my time. You've taken an hour of all this people's time. I think it's time that we just leave. Let them do their job because I'm done. Thank you all. You have a good night. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. In fact, I ran on the uh, plank that I felt like this was wrong, and I felt like I got very good response from it. Uh, I think the mockery happened when we had a committee decided to do this, when actually there wasn't a committee that had anybody on the Louisville, Texas, uh, anybody that lived in Louisville on that committee. We had a doctor who was supposed to have been used as the expert, but was never called into the committee. So I, I don't think the mockery is sitting here talking about it. I think it's a discussion that needs to be had and it needs to be, you know, decided upon. Well, in going back to what Jeff said, if we continue down this path, Mr. Perry is going to build a building that will house 2,200 kids. So in three, four, five years, we decide, hey, you know what? This wasn't such a good idea. We have a whole new board, we have a whole new this, and then go with strategic design, we got to change the from block schedule to regular schedule, whatever, it doesn't it doesn't work. Then what, we spend millions of more dollars retrofitting a building? I, I agree with Jeff, we need to take a step back. And I also, um, I, I appreciate what Ms. Kyer says, but I don't, I don't think I have micromanaged. I have gone to Dr. Waddell and spot and, and given him my input and, or, or addressed, get asked him my concerns. Um, but I too was elected by a body of people that were um, tired of Louisville residents 
not being listened to. And, and I'm sorry that others don't get my phone calls. I have changed my voicemail message to list your phone numbers if you want. But he's like, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Um, but that's how it was. Anything else? Yes. Ms. Flores, did you have anything you'd like to say? I think it's just exactly what Carol said, that we just said, we, we just want the opportunity to have sophomores there. It is what we both want, it is where we were going. We would love to have that opportunity, but like Dr. Rogers said, whatever we decide, we're going to support it and be 100%. So we appreciate y'all taking the time and listening. Thank you. Well, I, I would like to see direction. I, I would like to see uh, something come up in the next board meeting that, that allowed us uh, the uh, informational as to what our options are, what we can do. Uh, I think this workshop was, was more than just uh, the air and grease, but you know, to say what direction does this board want to carry it. So I, I would like to see the direction given to the, the staff to uh, give us what the options are, whether what all the options are. Well, and what y'all were looking at back then, Andy mentioned, they were expecting a much larger population at Will School High School than what we have and what we're even projected to have. And the talk of new apartments, I have good news. The mayor said again in his election campaign, they're not going to build any new apartments in Will School. He said that two years ago, too. So don't hang your hat on that one. Um, people in local would love for him to build an apartment. Um, I don't think three campuses is good. It's expensive. Um, I think that if you're in ninth grade and you don't qualify to go to tenth grade, you go back to ninth grade. I have an issue with adding tenth graders, the older kids in with the younger kids. We're going to negate the positives that, that we saw. And, and again, this is such a great idea, roll it out to all of LISD. And then you won't have just school school people in here. And I don't think we're talking about changing anything for next year. I, I no, but we need to have a plan yeah. because if they build this building smaller, we're stuck. And it's gonna cost us millions more to get out of it. Now you at one time had told me and a few others that there were alternate plans should we need to rebuild the section that's being torn down larger. <coughs> That falls true. Do we have a, <coughs> once we tear it down and we rebuild it, we're, we're done? In our, in our March 2011 presentation, I think we went through about 13 different options. I mean, there was options upon options upon options. And, uh, one of those options, when we built, rebuilt Louisville High School for 2,200 students, we planned for a future addition. You know, we try to do that on any building we design. Not sure what the future holds for us, but we try to plan for a space for that. So there is an opportunity to add an additional classroom wing to Louisville High School if you choose to do that. But would it be more cost efficient to do that sooner rather than later? I guess you could count on another housing bust and the cost of construction to go down again. Really, at this point, Mrs. Latham, it's just the economy. But right. If we had a boom in the cost of material, you might see an additional cost. If you waited six to 12 months, no, I don't. But it's not in our bond money, so we would have to have another bond election to do that. It is not in your current bond, that is correct. Funding would have to come from us. I, uh, I believe, to some extent, to hear you say that you're not thinking about what you I, mean, I haven't really heard that. That's going to be a concern to me. Frankly, I think that would be disastrous. I, 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 you, know, you asked me earlier, is it impossible? Yeah. So nothing's impossible. That would be. It, oh, it, well, would, yeah. it would be. Uh, it would be uh, catastrophic. It would be a case study. Um, <laughs> you read about I, us. <laughs> I, I have a couple, a couple of points and a couple of concerns to throw out. Again, when we had the workshop last year, we go back to that. I gave everybody the opportunity to take a different course of action. And it really doesn't matter why you did what you did. That doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. It's what matters is you, you, we brought it forward, we gave you several scenarios, and, uh, um, and we could have done different things. It was still pretty late. It was pretty late in the game. 
but my, my recollection is correct. We felt like we had some opportunities to revise what we were doing at Harmon and could do a little bit of changes on that building to make it something different. Uh, we went forward, we finished the building out as a traditional high school, more or less. <clears throat> uh, you have capacity for all the students in your system and then some in these three buildings. The, one of your big problems you're facing is that these buildings are already built. It's, it's uh, you, you have three buildings that are that designated Louisville High School. It, it'd be nice if we were sitting here and that wasn't the case. Or it'd be nice if we were sitting here and one was still at a point that it could be changed, but that's not where we're at. Where we're at is these buildings are built, there's kids in them, they're high school buildings, that's what they're built for. Um, other possible scenarios of what these could be might require changes in those buildings. That comes with a good cost. Adding on to Louisville High School, the senior campus, comes with a cost. Even if you built it, it's going to cost extra or something. And you're still going to have an extra building uh, that has the capacity, gives you the capacity to house all these kids. I'm not arguing the merits of three campuses, two and one. <clears throat> Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm only arguing what the reality is. Um, we're, you know, talking about, I think the question about where are we going long term and uh, <clears throat> uh, not, not changing things as we go. Well, the problem is, is we are discussing changing something almost as soon as we got into it. Um, and, you know, a year into it, we're, we're discussing the possibility at any rate of going in an entirely different direction. So we're already contemplating doing what you're warning us not to do. Um, I thought Dr. Rogers' comment, there's not, nothing perfect in schedules, nor are there buildings, and or are there in great configurations. We like to be as scientific as we can in the school business, but we're, we can never be totally exact on anything. It's you know, a grade level configuration. It's not ideal. I read today in the newspaper that in Indiana they're getting rid of grade levels altogether. And you know, if you look at some, there there might be some uh, some advantages to that. Some uh, smart people from Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> they're visionary. Up there. They're they're visionary up there. Well, you know, you think why do we have grade levels in the first place? Nobody knows. Um, they, they have nothing to do with learning, and I'm, I don't want anyone walking out of here saying Steve Whitehill's advocating abolishing grade levels, but the bottom line is there's, there's not a rationale for it, and, and we, we already, one of the downsides to grade levels, and you, you kind of allude to it in, in a particular way, is that we say people are failures at the end of a grade, and instead of, and so, you know, we, we heard at the, uh, we heard at the uh, national Conference, somebody saying we shouldn't be South, South Con, Con Academy. Shouldn't be basing success. We base it on time, not learning. And in our, all the work that's been done on the strategic design has been about focusing on the learning and not artificial constraints that have nothing to do with learning. You're not a failure at the end of a grade level if you give somebody more time to achieve. Um, and it, do we really want them to learn or do we want to cut off learning on them and say, you're done, you're through? Um, well, we're not there yet. But a schedule, I, I remember studying block scheduling with William Kennedy at the University of Virginia. There's a whole litany of block schedules. So if you're based on what your goals are kind of good, what are your goals? And you ask that. Same thing has to do with buildings. I, I, we can have great success with these kids in ninth and 10th grade centers, and we could probably have great success with them in ninth we we'll probably have great success with them 9 through 12. We just happen to be where we're at. My, my feeling is <clears throat> we're already here. And we'll do what the board asks us to do. But we're already here. And it seems to make sense to me that we, we move forward and see how does this work and get some data on it. Um, I don't think that it will keep us from meeting what our strategic design is going to be. I don't think it will. Um, if down the road 
we look at the data and we go, we need to modify this, we could do that. But that won't be any different than modifying it next year or the year after. I mean, you're still modifying it. It's just a question of when. Uh, but we'll be doing it without data. I know there's feelings on this. I understand that. I, it's, I, I've known it since I walked in this door. The first time I walked in, when I was still sitting over here, not up there, was people pro and con walking up to the microphone and talking about this. So I understand all about that. I'm, I'm very concerned. We've had a, a really, really good year. And uh, as a board, as a district, it's been a great year. And I'm excited about what we've been doing. Um, I'm excited about the strategic design. <coughs> I've been pleased with the unity of this board and the way we've worked together. And I'm concerned that we not do anything that harms either one of us. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a little distressing to me right now. I have great respect for all of you. And, uh, and you know that. We form a good relationship, and I don't think you have any doubts about it. And, and I just, I, I, I feel like I should point out to you that concern. Um, and uh, we, 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 uh, we do our work at the uh, behest of, of the board. And what they ask us to do, we'll continue to do that. And should you decide to change what we're doing, we'll do all we can to make that work out. Um, but I, I'm, I'm a little, I'm, I have some, I have some worries about where we're at at this point, and um, um, I think we can move forward, um, and we won't get off course uh, in terms of meeting our long-range goals. If we do contemplate a change, I would like to do it systematically and methodically, um, and, and not rush into something that's going to jeopardize the strategic direction that we have. Um, and uh, so uh, anyway, I just I just encourage you all to let's keep let's keep the focus on the larger picture of what it is we're trying to do as a district and not lose that. And and, and keep working on keeping this an effective team of eight. Um, and and uh, whatever we end up doing, do it in a careful and methodical systematic way and not do something that's too quick with that. I guess I can put it that way. Um, so that's that's basically what I'm thinking about. And I would also in terms of our making decisions um, as a as a board that we continue to follow as much as we can the process we have for making those decisions, which was put in place to make sure that things are done in a thoughtful, strategic way. So I just, you know, uh, I want to share that out. I appreciate you all giving me the chance to, to say that. Let's, but the working together as a team and the working together strategically for that strategic design, those are the most important things. That will ultimately, Jeff, get us to where we want to go, regardless of the configurations that we have. Well, yeah, yeah just reiterate. We are a team of eight, and we're all going in the same direction. We're going to move in the great way. Yeah, we'll get there now. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm a little disappointed in Carol because she is, when I look at her as a senior member of the board, we kind of set the tone in that. And, you know, I wish she would have stuck around for this, you know, to draw this to a conclusion and got to hear the final comments. And I just can't tell you how disappointed and kind of surprised she would act in that and uh, show that behavior. I think she's saying <clears throat> micromanagement and that we probably. That's what she said, I agree. That's the role of the board. And it was, you know, she laid it out there, and that's good. And I would expect that from a senior member. I would not expect her to get healthy and leave. And I hope she didn't hit where I, I think she hit because it's a political season. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's a political <clears throat> position, but I try, try to keep politics out of it. I hate the politics side of it. But, uh, you know, again, I think we've got a pretty good board and we pull together and, you know, this is a, this is not a public meeting, it's a meeting in public. It's for us to, to talk and do it legally and get all of our views and everything out on the table and, uh, you know, everybody can hear everything. We can't go meet outside here at the right. coffee shop and talk about it and decide how we're going to do things and all that and so And yeah, that was this purpose. That's exactly that, what this purpose Well, and I don't is. think that we... You know, going back to what Dr. Wendell said, I don't think anyone surpassed that process. Right. Or did I miss something? No. 
know, and I could really, we did not, when I kept hearing that everybody wanted to talk about this and all, and I thought, we've done that. What, are, what is there to talk about? However, I have to respect my board members. You want to talk? Here's something new that we can talk. So here we are, and I appreciate the administration pulling all of this together, and now we'll just kind of hopefully move on. Ms. And Ms. Yes. Greg, and first off, we appreciate the board, and, and uh, I know from all of us, the bottom line is wherever we've been at during this process, there is no doubt that everyone around this table sincerely wants the best for all LHS students. That's never, that's always been on the table. I, I have a question twice now. I've, I've heard micromanagement. Are there members of the board who are calling outside of Dr. Waddell? And no, but can I, you give me some examples of? No, well, I was just looking at what Tom, um, he, he was saying that um, uh, the issue goes to the heart of board governance. The role of the board is to set goals for the district as a whole and then to oversee the management of the district by the administration as you work to achieve those goals. When the board begins to take initiatives inside district operations, I believe we are on the crossing, of getting to crossing the line into management um, of the district resident oversight. And so, you know, we have given direction, we have voted, and now we have to uh, accept it. We gave them a direction and we can't jerk it, we should not jerk it, and say, hey, we changed our mind. Well, and no one, no one here is saying that. And I know, I know this is what I'm saying, so I'm glad that we had this opportunity to discuss, and now I hope that we can move on. So, so what, what, what are we leaving here with today? What are we, what, what is the direction that, that we're going on? If, uh, if we're not, uh, I've heard from everyone, if we're not talking about anything, we, uh, yeah. <coughs> that means we're going to have the 10th graders there next yes. year. Yes. And obviously, we're going to do as good a job of them as we can. And as long as those metrics that you approved last winter are in place, we'll collect data on those metrics and report those back to you. <coughs> you know, I mean, we can, down the road, whatever that is, Next year, the year after, the year after that, we can evaluate and have more workshops if you choose to do so. But it, it, you know, if, if we're not talking about making changes for the next year, then there's no decisions to be made at this point. And we, you know, we, we go into collecting the data and, and try to make those campuses work well next year for the kids that are going to be able to those campuses. Then, so here we are at next year going, we don't have time, you know, to change things before the third year. I, I don't think, Mike, you, you can do, I would say in any year, doesn't matter which year it is, mm -hmm. when it affects a campus, it's something a campus does, that you can do it in, in, in the spring. Uh, it's, it's just, uh, it's like, it's like moving the Titanic, um, you know, it's, any, anything that we've contemplated in terms of change of configurations that involve thousands of people. Um, you can't do anything about that in the springtime. It's just very, no time to get it done. And for that reason, I'd, li I'd like to feel like I asked earlier, see our uh, options at the next board meeting and have a discussion and see if we want to change, not for next year, but for, for the following year. 
that would be my recommendation. I, uh, I just you know, respectfully say that in terms of getting you, doing a good job of giving you options, and if the next board meeting is a very difficult thing for us to do. I mean, we can give you options, but whether we're doing a good job on that, given the time frame, so I can just, as a former educator, speak to the, and I understand how everyone around the table feels, and um, I've expressed my feelings on this topic many times as well. But as a former educator, this time of year is just, I don't know, can't be pretty enough. That's insane. It is just such a busy time. You know that, Mike, as a former principal. So for things to be presented by the next board meeting, um, as far as options, I don't see how people can do that. That's May 14th. That's a good idea. I mean, if you want benchmarks at a fall board retreat, um, I don't know how long until the school year that would be. Not benchmarks. I think he's asking for options. Options. We won't have in the fall. We're not going to have any much more data than we have right now. I would tell you how many tenth graders are on the campus. I don't know how we had any, any results like that. But to me, that's. Discussions like that are appropriate for workshop settings, number one, and number two. We just need the time to be thorough. Well, I, I have no problem with presenting at the workshop. If, if, that, if that gives us time to change things, if that's what the board's choice is, with, with that October, November workshop. That's, a, the, what, uh, that's a board retreat, right? Yes, ma'am. You know, it certainly could be done. I, I don't think you're going to have data to make a decision yeah, okay, for, again, I go data. back to that, I don't think you can have, um, I've lost the term, um, academic achievement or whatever. No, you all have I, I think, I still think it folks two years. more back on what do we want to look like as we go forward and we've got, yeah. I say this one, how do we get all these resources out right. there, buildings, mortar, bricks, stadiums, whatever, how do we best utilize those in, when I see a board retreat, maybe that's the time when you take a long-term vision and say, with all these resources available, right. what's the best use of them? If we, we're not talking about a charter school, but if you were, that would be the time to throw out there and say, here's the facility we have in the house. Yeah, I, I like that idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Long -term. So, but we're not talking about charter school. Right. <laughs> like that. Okay, share that again, Jim. Uh, uh, just okay, to share, share that with me one more time. We are on time. track to present well, a our facility assessment for strategic board in June. How do you use your resources? Okay. And yeah. overlay or do the updates to the demographic study. Dr. Dr. Brad brings up a good point. So the committee will finish their work, yeah. buy them, and yeah. uh, so the net feeds right into that. And so we'll have to let that, so that might form a discussion. We'll probably need to have a, following that, we need to have a workshop anyway. And what they can tell us about all, all the facilities. And I kind of like Jeff's direction there. I, I think that could be productive. Well, but, so somebody alert Carol that we're going to revisit and talk about it again at the fall retreat. Well, I hear you saying, and if I'm wrong, you're not just talking about just those two campuses either. You're talking about the no, I want, Yeah, I, I try to, you know, as I said, my job to represent the entire district. Yeah. You look at all the resources we've got and are <laughs> best utilizing and balanced. Yeah. No, that's my question. You, 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 you just have to do it public, which you did. That's true. That's true. This is why I like our diversity, that level thinking and there. Bring us back. <laughs> that's okay. I'll let you pull up. Anything else? Right. I think that's the one to throw it out. We'll just work the discussion on it. Is that agreeable, Mike? I think there's consensus here. Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Gray? That's fine. Dude, You're not very good. Well, I'm not asking you. No, I'm asking you. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Anyone else? Carry on. I'm good. Thank, Thank you very much. I appreciate everyone.
Thank you for coming, and thank you for all of these letters and concerns. Have a good evening. The meeting is adjourned at 7. Thank you.